henry so straight away the toilet one i think we can uh, start with the so mm -hmm. we'll just start with some basic things we need to know and uh, like dr Isako said we're not going to do talk 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 so we just share some basic knowledge that we go into interpreting uh, ecg and so for you to be part of this uh, of this lecture and to gain maximally you need a paper a pen and you should have that belief that ecg is something you can interpret remove that fear remove that old notion that you have that it's only some people that can interpret everybody can interpret ecg get a pen have that belief you need to practice and there are some things that you need to put to memorize yeah that you will keep using along the line and once you are able to do this these are the basic requirements that you need and then um, ecg is a relatively cheap and widely available tool that you need to record the electrical activity of the heart and by doing that you can gain access to a lot of information about the heart or even infer some for some other conditions that are not even mainly art related so you can do get electrolytes size of electrolyte derailment heart attack all other things arrhythmia and so you need to know and for people that are medical doctors medical students we all know that on ecg all you see are different lines and graphs and <laughs> you need to just make a sense and make a meaning of all those lines so we need to know okay this line what does it stand for this one that's going up what does it represent and that is what we'll quickly explain in simple term for us to know and if you are looking at the screen you will see that what i'm showing you is what you have on your ecg you just have it repeating itself over and over yeah. and over and it's, over it's like a piano so yes. you have different parts and then just repeating over and, and over and again. over and over so, so what you have is p qrs complex and t wave occasionally there, there can be a u wave but this is all you have you have a p wave you have a qrs complex and you have t wave and if you look at it you will see a line if you can see my cursor that is what we call the isoelectric line this straight line i'm pointing to and from that line you will see a bulb that is going up that is the first bulb which we called which we call p wave the first bulb that i have pointed to is what we call p wave and what it stands for is atrial depolarization yeah or if we don't say it simply atrial contraction but the right word to use is atrial depolarization that is this first bulb and let me take your back anything that you see going up above this isoelectric line we'll call it a positive deflection yeah okay. anything going below that line we call it negative deflection so i can say this first positive deflection is what we call p wave and I, it represents depolarization of the atrium then after that you come to another straight line another isoelectric line let me jump that we'll talk about that later then you see what looks like a w so for the w you have a first negative deflection that is called q wave then you have a positive deflection called i wave and you see it's coming down to a negative deflection that is called s wave before coming back to the straight line so that qrs coming together is what we call qrs complex and it represents ventricular yeah. depolarization 
So we said P wave is atrial depolarization or contraction, if you want to call it. The QRS is ventricular depolarization. Then you come to back to the isoelectric line before you see another positive deflection that is called a T wave, which stands for ventricular repolarization. So someone will ask me that I talked about ventricular depolarization yeah. and ventricular repolarization. That where is atrial repolarization? If this first word is atrial depolarization. So atrial depolarization is it is somewhere in, 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 inside this QRS complex and you cannot see it. So what we have is first positive deflection called a P wave, which is atrial depolarization. Second, All right. All right. Thank you. Sorry about that. Underwater sea cable. <laughs> uh, we're back. So we're going. We're talking about the. Um, we're talking about the basics of. All right, we're back. Sorry about that. So we talked about how the impulse travels in the heart. Dr. Alejandro was taking us through the P wave, the QRS, um, and what happens in all of them. The first thing we said is that just understand that the entire ECG is about P, Q, R, S, T. And the first part is for the atrium, when the atrium is charging before it contracts. The second part is for the ventricle, when the ventricle is charging. That charging process is what we call depolarization. So it depolarizes and contracts. So um, that's essentially what happens in this, this in the heart. So P wave, uh, um, the atrium is charging. PR, it's wait for the impulse to go. Then it now moves, it now discharges under the QRS. 
and then the QRS now the ventricles now charge before it contracts, and then the ventricles now recover and then discharge. So this ST segment represents when the ventricle is recovering. So anytime there's blood supply problem, the, the ventricle is too big, this ST segment will show the problem. That is essentially what we're talking about. And this is a more wow. detailed diagram. So what we were talking about today is that we started doing, we did the first left bundle area pacing. So normally when we do our pace, when we do pacemaker, they just put the pace, the second one here and the first one here to help the person quite good. But we found out that it's perhaps much better if you can put your lead inside the left bundle branch, inside the septum inside the left bundle branch, so that you get a better um, contraction. And that is uh, what we talked about. Um, so... Essentially, the ECG is all about intervals and segments. Yes. But we are not going to go through all of this because if we go through all of it, you will be confused. You will be confused. And you will not be able to use it for everyday practice. That's why we titled it ECG for everyday practice. So, what are the main things you need to know? First, the P wave is there for the heart. This PR interval will help you know if there is a block between the in the atrium. AV node between the atrium and uh, yeah, atrium and the ventricle. So when this place depolarizes, it comes down to this yellow point. That is the AV node. So if the PR interval is prolonged, it means there's a blockage there. Now we use the RR interval to know the rate of the okay. heart. We're going to go through that, and then we use the ST segment to that's this orange part to be able to tell us about the ventricles when it's discharging. And if ventricle is sick, like in a, in a heart attack, and that will now show us that. So, so we'll just look at this to know that the 12 lead ECG looks at specific parts of the heart, such that when you want to look for problem in one area, you need to know the leads where to look because like the scripture says that is in the uh, in the amount of two or three <laughs> that you establish uh, a matter so we have leads that look at each part of the heart so we have lead one v and for the precordial lead we have v1 to v6 yeah for the limb lead you have one two three and the, the three augmented lead avl avf and avr so for the leads looking at the lateral part of the heart, looking at the art from the side, we have lead V5, V6, 1, and AVL. That's why we said there are some things you just have to craft it. Yeah. So V5, V6, 1, and AVL. Remember I told you to have a notebook? So this is what you are writing. You must write. Don't say you wait for the slides. It will not help you. You must write, write it down. If you were going to learn ECG, you must write. So write now. So those are the lateral leads. Then we have the inferior leads. Lead 2, lead 3, and AVF. So if I want to look at problem affecting the inferior part of the heart, whether there's problem with blood supply to that area, and we go there and look at that area. Lead 2, lead 3, and AVF. Then... Lead V1, V2, V3, V4 are the leads we call anterior septa. Anterior part and the septa dividing the right ventricle and the left ventricle. This one, you need to grab them. You need to grab them. You need to memorize them so that when we're going to use them, we'll be able to recall them and you will understand why we are saying what we personally, uh, what we're talking to you about so like we said we're not going to go into what is going to cause confusion so we're just going to let us know we've talked about identification each yeah. week then we'll talk about uh, how to calculate the art rates and how to identify some basic uh, some basic abnormalities Okay, so if you look in the chat box, if you look in the chat box, you will see um, ECG um, sheets, ECG sheets in the chat box. At the top, you will see the PDF file that has been there, or you can click that link 
and download um, and download this CD sheet. It's very important. We're going to use it. It's going to be your own. We're going to use it to learn throughout uh, this. So it's your own. Uh, share respectfully uh, and credit us when you share. Okay, so if you look, you can see the link. You can see a file that is there. You can download it and you can click a link. I put it up. Just scroll up in the chat box and you will see it. Oh, 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 oh. I, think, I think I know. I, I think you sent And I think you sent it to just panelists. Okay, so check, check, check. There's a file and link now. It has been put up again. Check again, please. It has been put up. It's there. So download it. I'm going to use that to start answering ECGs. So. Welcome. We will start with this one. Or we'll go to, yeah, let's just use this slide to do the app, uh, to calculate yeah. the attributes. So we are up. All right, so here is uh, how we go about it. First, make sure you are using the correct ECG. Then check the rates. To do the rates, it's just 300 divided by the number of big boxes. I hope we are all seeing, we all ha have the sheet now. 300 divided by the number of big boxes. Okay, great. Somebody said yes. yes. Good. So we have that now. 300 divided by the number of people. That's how we get our sheet, our heart rate. So if there are three big boxes in between, 300 divided by three is 100. If it's four, it's 75. If it's five, it's 60. If it is six, six it is 50. 50. If it is uh, seven, it is 33, and so on and so forth. So, um, so this is just how to look at it, and then you're able to get the rate. Now, if you're a nurse, if you're anybody, if somebody's on admission, you have the ECG up, you should look up and you should be able to see the rate of the heart. Okay, the rate of the heart. Anything that starts crossing 150 is likely life threatening. So you should know that anything that starts crossing 140, 150 is likely life threatening. Don't say it's pain. So if you are monitoring a patient, you see that on your ECG, or you are doing a surgery for a patient, you see that on your monitor. Know that there is trouble. The next thing now is you need to interpret that ECG so that you can take appropriate action. People don't just die. They normally uh, find it. They normally give signs. Okay? So the link is in the box. Pamela, you send the link to only host and panelists. No, you've done it now? Yeah. Okay, so just click. There's a link in the box. You will see you can click it to download. It, there's also a, a PDF file in the box that has been posted. You can download it. I think some people have seen it. Others, maybe we need to do a, a Zoom meeting on how to download it. <laughs> All right, great. We we'll also share it in the WhatsApp group. So, Pamela, perhaps you can share it in the WhatsApp group. Um, I said two files. So I two files. Okay, great. So, this is the rate. So if you look at this one now, what is the heart rate, heart rate here? Yeah. Can we put in the chat box what we think the heart rate is? For this ECG that's on now. For this ECG that is on, that you can see on your screen, what is the heart rate? So let's do it together. We said, thank you, Adamo, Aliyu. We said 300 divided by the number of big boxes. There are two big boxes here, Abby. So 300 divided by two is what? 150, beautiful. So that's essentially how we go about it. So let's look at this one. What about this one? What is the heart rate here? In this slide that we're looking at now. 300 divided by the number of big boxes. How many boxes are here? Let's look. One, two, three, four, five, six. 300 divided by six is what? 50. So great. Uh, Dr. Ogio, that's good. Um, so that is how to calculate the heart rate for very, most of the patients. Very, very simple. The next thing now is the reading. Is how do we get the reading? So uh, we go to the we go and look for the reading. We just ask ourselves these five questions. 
Very, very simple. You see how simple ECG is. You wonder why you could not read it before. The first question is that our R R intervals regular. That is the different distance between one oh, R wave wow. and the other R wave. Not the R wave that Dr. Alaric showed us earlier. The distance between the let's look at this one now. On this one, we can see are all the R R um, regular. So look at the, this R. This is R. This is R. Yes. So the, this distance between the first R, the second R. The third R, so these R are intervals. Are they are they all um, the, same. the same? Are they regular? Are they regular? So that's what we, that's what we look at to see. Okay, so next thing we say is the P wave upright in the two and inverted in AVR. So let's come to the two. This is where the uh, P wave is. This is the, this is let me look for a better ECG. Good, this is a better ECG. So now, we look at this one now. There's a P wave in the two here. Yes. I think we can see that P wave. The same one is here too. The same one is here. This P wave, is it facing up or down? It's facing up, right? That's positive. So that is positive. Now in AVR, this is AVR. This P wave here, here. Um, here, here is facing down. down. So that is what we say. Is it upright in uh, in AVR or inverted inverted in AVR? So upright is it upright in the two or inverted in AVR? The next question we we'll ask ourselves is: Are all the P waves? Are all the P waves, are all the QRSs preceded by a P wave? Number one. Then are all do all the P waves have a QRS after it? Then number five. Are all the P waves looking the, looking the same or not? Are all the P waves looking the same? So the answer is uh, so we'll now go. So let's look at this ECG now. If you have your sheet now that you have downloaded, you are going to use that sheet now because all this information is already there. All the information is already there. So we have put up from Cardio Care website free of charge to Nigerian healthcare workers. So first question, P wave in the two, is it upright? Yes. Can we all see the P wave in, in the, the two? In the two. Let me use this one. So this P wave now, is it upright? It's facing upwards, Abby? Correct. Now the P wave in AVR, is it facing downwards? The answer is yes, it's facing downwards. So question number one, correct. Question number two, uh, R R interval. So the distance between this place and this place and this place and this place, are they approximately the same? They are approximately the same. The question number three, is there a QRS after every P wave? So P wave, yes. QRS, P wave, QRS, great. Number four, before every QRS, is there a P wave? And the answer is yes. Number five, do all the P waves look alike? And the answer is yes, they all look alike. So this is a sinus region. Sinus reading means it's a normal reading. I hope that is very clear. Is there any, if you have any question, just put it in the chat box or in the Q&A. So you don't understand. All right. So, so no significant questions now. So equal distance, yes, correct. That's correct English. Thank you, English teacher. Uh -huh. So now we now come to this one. So this one is this sinus reading. Sinus reading. Let's use the five principle, starting from the RR. At the RR, at the interval between the R waves are they regular? Are they the same? So look at it very well. Look at it very well. The P wave in the, in the two, two is it upright? upright. In uh, AVR, is it inverted? inverted? That's second. Is there a P wave before every QRS complex? That's the battery. Is there a QRS after every P wave? Exactly. That's the back four. Then the P wave, are they similar? Are they looking the right. same? 
So, let's so everybody is saying not sign us. And what is it now if it's not sign us? So go to that your sheet now. Go to that your sheet that we have shared with you. You will see the sheet like this. So if, if in the sheet you will see it. Uh, so in the sheet we can see the five questions. So we have different examples. If there is no P wave, we call that an atrial fibrillation. Typically, it's irregular. The R interval is irregular, and there is no P wave. We call that a QRS. So, I mean, an atrial fibrillation. So, see an example of atrial fibrillation. So, let's go back. I think that was atrial fibrillation. Yes. So, let's go back um, to our ECG again. All right, so, great. So what we can see is that we cannot see a very clear cut P wave. Mm -hmm. Anytime I look for a P wave, we look at it in two or V1. We cannot see a clear cut P wave and it's irregular. So irregular RR interval no with P -wave. no P wave equals atrial fibrillation. This atrial fibrillation must be treated. You should recognize this. These people are at risk for stroke. They need to be seen by a specialist and they need to get stroke prevention uh, work done for them. All right, Italy, over to you. So, is this a sinus reading or not? Stick to those five basic principles. Don't look at the jaga jaga that you are saying. Just look at your P wave. Is the RR interval is it regular here? The question is yes or no. Let's count. Let's look at this. This is one, two, three, and small. This is one, two, three, and a little. One, two, three, and a little. We can say yeah. the they are regular. Yeah. The second question is when we come to lead two, the P yeah, wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see your the P wave. Okay, yeah, yeah. The P wave in lead two. Are they upright? This is one P wave is upright. This is P wave is upright. This is P wave. And if you go to AVR. The P wave, are they inverted? One, inverted. So that's second. So before every QRS, is there a P wave? The answer is yes. This is one. This is P QRS. This is P QRS. Then before each QR, what a QRS, do we have a P wave? So this is QRS. This is P. This is QRS P. QRSP, that one is refused. And the last one, the P wave, are they looking alike? So, irrespective of how the QRS is looking, this is a sinus reading, which you have answered. Leave the QRS, we will get there on another good day. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have any question? Is it clear? Do you have a question? So, this is a sinus reading, right? So this one is sinus. The other one was an atrial fibrillation. So it it meets all this. So now we we'll go to the next uh, next thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so is this a sinus reading or not? And if it's not a sinus reading, what is it? <laughs> Don't worry, Mr. Dr. Clinton or Kenne. We will tell you what it is. It's not too dangerous like that. We will tell you what it is. This thing is very simple. Very, very simple. If you follow us on your writing, you will you will you will need the bomb after this. Alright, so somebody says silent, somebody says it's not silent. So P wave in um two. So P wave in in the two. We can see it, Abby. P wave in the two. We can see the P wave there. We can see another P wave there. We can see another P wave there. Yes. So it's P upright. wave in the two, is it upright or what is it? Yes, the P wave is upright. Okay. Then we come to um, AVR. Yeah. In AVR, we now look the P wave there. The P wave is not very clear here. There's a P wave here. Fine. Is it inverted? Yes. yes. Now the next question. Um, RR interval. Are they equal? Equal? No. no. 
This one is very long. This one is short. So long, short. It has failed one of the criteria. Correct. So it is not sinus. Okay. It must pass all. Next question is that before every QRS, is there a P wave? Mm -hmm. Yes, QRS, P, 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 QRS. And after every P wave, there a QRS. The answer is yes. And every P wave has a QRS. Now, the more pertinent question the P wave. The P waves, do they all look alike? Do they all look alike? So let's look at this one. This one and this one. They are not looking. Do, do they look alike? Yes. Do they look alike? I, I don't think so. Yeah, they don't look alike. So let, let, let me circle it again. This one and this, this one. Yes. Do they look alike? And the next one here. The next one here. This this other one here. So they don't look alike, are we? So what what are we doing? So this is another P wave here, and this is another P wave here. So what is happening is that the P wave is coming from different points in the atrium. That is why the two are not looking alike, and we have an irregular. So we call this an atrial ectopic pregnancy. Yes. Ectopic, just like ectopic pregnancy. Atrial from the atrium. So ectopic atrial rhythm. So Not coming from the sinus, the pacemaker of the arts. Exactly. Where the normal sign uh, normal uh, signal is supposed to be generated from. Do we have a question? Somebody says he it thinks it's sinus. It's not sinus because we failed our five questions. So look at the sheet that we posted. Uh, you see that it failed the fact that the RR is not equal. And all the P waves are not similar. Mm -hmm. So that is why it's, it's not sinus. Now we now further went around to say, okay, if they are not, if, why? We have different types of P waves. Now we say P waves for atrium, maybe when the atrium is charging. So therefore, different areas of the atrium are charging and, and try to give rise to the P waves. It's different from atrial flutter. We will see a table Correct. that will show us how atrial population and atrial flutter. This is atrial. Ectopic beat or atrial premature complex. The beat is coming from different points in the atrium apart from the normal pacemaker. Okay, fine. So let's go to the next, uh, next one. All right, so. Uh, now we can see this table. Um, in this table now, it's clear what it is, what is um, happening. So if you have no, irregular P waves, it will be, I mean, if, if it's the rhythm is not regular, and then it's, it will be fast or slow, no P waves, we call that atrial fibrillation. In atrial flutter, however, it could be regular. However, you have multiple P waves before a QRS. So, so it is good you master this table. It's going to help a lot. In complete hard block, it is irregular. So if you see, there is a very simple sheet of common ECG patterns you should know that we have shared with you as well. It is all in your chat box, common ECG patterns that you should know. So it's on our website and it's there for free. Share it, tag us, and refer patients for us. <laughs> And to any cardiologist that's available. All right, so um, just look at this and you will know. So that's essentially how we do. So let's look at this one now. In this one now, what is this ECG? Yes, so let's start again. Number one, is there P wave before every QRS? I mean, number one, is the P wave upright in the two? These, these are P waves here. It is inverted. Yes, in the two. So it and has then it, the first two. Correct. And the AVR, it is upright. It is upright. So it has failed that one. Is it regular? It's about regular. It's about regular. Um, is there a is QR there a P wave before every QRS? QRS? Yes, it is before every QRS. Now, the second question that looks like tautology is yeah, there a QRS, QRS after every Q wave? wave? This is now we can see. P wave, no QRS. P wave, no QRS. P wave, no QRS. P wave, QRS. P -wave, QRS. So it has failed that one as well. So after every P wave, there's no QRS. So there was one question that said, 
Is there a period before every QRS? Is there a QRS after every period? It looks like the same thing, but it's not but the same. Different. So you can see. If you look in V1, 2, we can see P wave, no QRS. You can see P wave, no QRS. Then we can see another P wave, no QRS. Then another P wave, four QRS. QRS. So this is what we call an HR slaughter. And if you go to the previous table, you will see that we said the leading is fairly regular. Yes. You see P with multiple P with. Yes. That is a trial flutter. All right. So all reading really problems should be referred to a specialist. And you can do that to value care as well. All right. I think we have tracked this enough. Ah. So maybe we should do this one. Okay. Oh, not yet. Not yet. Let's, let's go down. All right. So um, let's go to our sheets. Um, yes. Let's go to our sheets. Um, so we're saying different types of P waves, we call it multifocal lateral tachycardia. Now, when there is a QRS, that is, when there's an absent QRS after a P wave, remember we showed the internal flutter that had an absent QRS. So it's a type of a mobis block, really. Because, um, so we will now say it is mobis one, two, or three. So in first degree AV block, what we just say is that PR is just length or not. So if you in the first degree AV block, PR is just prolonged. Nothing to worry about. By the time you get to Mobitz 1, second degree AV block, what you have is a progressively prolonging PR interval before the Q wave, before the it gets dropped. So we can see this PR interval is short. Then we come, let me use a different color. Okay, so we can see this PR interval is short. Then we come, it becomes longer. longer. Then we Next come, time. it becomes much longer. Then you this one now, a P wave and no, no QRS. QRS. So this is uh, Mobitz one. 1. Now in Mobitz 2, the PR is the same. PR is the same. the same. And then suddenly, suddenly you just say P wave and no QRS. Correct. All of these are AV nodal blocks. So at that AV node, remember I say P wave, atrium, AV node, where everything comes, comes together, together for the goal, correct, to the ventricle. Then we now have this other one. What is this one? It's not a two to one block. Oh, it is it's a two to one block. It's a two to one block. So just like we had in that um, um, Mobis two, Mobis two, you have a P wave, no, no QRS. QRS. Similar P R P wave, no QRS. QRS. And in the atrial flutter, sometimes you have multiple P waves before you now have QRS. No QRS. Now sometimes the P wave and the QRS will have no relationship at all. That typically is what we call a complete heart block. And in complete heart block, it's an emergency because most of them need the pacemaker. Pacemakers can be done. Can you describe Mobis 1 and 2 again? The toilet on your famous... Okay, we used to say, we used to use husband and wife to describe uh, our AV block. That's the first degree AV block, what we just have is the PR interval is just longer than usual. That means the husband comes home late, but comes every day. Yeah. So it comes, instead of coming 6 p.m., comes 8 p.m., but comes home every day. That is first degree AV block. Yeah. In second degree AV block, Mobitz 1, what happens is there is progressive prolongation of the PR interval until you get to a P wave that will not be followed by QRS. Correct. So what happens is the husband keeps coming home, coming back as in longer every day. So first day, he comes home 8 p.m. <laughs> Second day, he comes by 10. On the third day, he comes by 12 midnight. The <laughs> fourth day, he just refused to show. That is the way the second degree Mobit type 1 is. For second degree Mobit type 2, the PR interval is constant. Correct. Comes in the same time every day, but on the day, he just decides not, not to come home. So you, it's not predictable because the PR interval is very, very constant. Very constant. Then 
For third degree, there's divorce. Husband is doing his own, wife, wife is doing whether you call boom or you don't call boom, it's not my your head is not my business. <laughs> so that is the way we look at the AV block. So that's junction, that's yeah. our traffic water water that yeah. used to gather everything from the atrium. There's this there's issue there. And it's disturbing flow of signal impulse from the atrium to the ventricle. So again, what we are seeing it here. Um let me see. Okay, so what you just described, so here, husband came home by 9 o'clock, came home by 11 o'clock, came home by 1 a.m., then next, day. then next day he did not come home. In this one, husband comes home normally, comes home normally, and one day just did not come home. And here, yeah. just like that, does not come home one day, comes home another okay. day. So, and so that's how you now differentiate uh, this. You will see this, you are seeing them every day. You just did not know. Now you will now begin to recognize um, uh, what is happening. So, um, what, what? So, should we continue on this sheet? Yes, let's continue. So, we have done the rate already. Now, the next thing we talk about is axis. In axis, you need axis for every day practice. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Okay, so let's um, let's come to, peer, to intervals. So, in intervals, typically, all we are looking at is the time duration. Okay, um, there are two major intervals we are interested in, PR and QRS, PR and QRS. So, um, let me make this bigger. So, there are two major ones we are interested in, PR and QRS. Now, why are we interested in those two? Those are the two that, we, that are useful for everyday practice. Remember I said ECG for everyday practice. Um, All right, so uh, sorry you could not hear me. Um, so we can now see the PR uh, PR interval. So if you look, let me try and annotate. So if you look here, this is the PR interval. Here is the PR interval. Let me get it right here. here is the PR interval from the beginning of the P to the uh, beginning of the QRS complex. Okay, so. That is uh, the PR interval. Then we now come and we also we also look at the QRS. And we say from the beginning of the QRS to the end of the QRS. So here to here. So that is what we are looking at here to here. This QRS uh, should not be more than three small boxes. Yes, sir. And the PR interval from here to here should not be more than five, five small, small boxes. boxes. So anytime the QR is more than three small boxes, we say it's a wide QR. Yes. And anytime it is less than three small boxes, we say it's a narrow QR. Okay? So if this PR interval is more than five small boxes, we say there's a first degree block. Very simple. And when this QR is more than three boxes, we say that there is a, a wide QRS. And in the wide QRS, there are some things to note. The main thing to note is that a white QRS, if a white QRS is very fast, you are likely dealing with a ventricular tachycardia, and that heart is about to stop. So you are doing a surgery, you are seeing a patient, the patient is in your emergency room or wherever, you see the heart rate going to 180, 190, and, and the, the QRS is white. Correct. That's ventricular, ventricular tachycardia. tachycardia. If you don't do anything, the next thing that patient will stop breathing. And then you will start shouting. So sometimes patients are dying and people are looking at them and say, well, they are talking to us. Meanwhile, the patient may be talking to you and has that um, problem right there. So that is important for us to uh, see. And Good. So um, that's in tachycardia. However, if we have this kind of wall where we have look, something that looks like an M, in with one and something that looks like a v a w or a big big u in v6 we call that a right bundle branch block okay 
And if we have something that looks like a big V or U in V1, and something that looks like an M in V6, we call that a left bundle branch. It's important to notice. QRS is prolonged, and then the QRS is more, that is QRS is more than three small boxes. small boxes. And then you see this pattern, it's important. If the person has chest pain and has LBB pattern, you are likely to know it at MI. You need to get a specialist in. So in V1, you have it prolonged and it's like this, V, big W, William, William. And in... Um, RBB Maru M. Okay. And and there is is uh Maru. Hey, hey, let me stop sharing. So uh, so uh, sorry, let me see the questions. Uh Okay, somebody said the husband and wife method is very beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look in the chat box, before we proceed any further, if you look in the chat box, there is a link we want you to click. That link should give you some basic ECG um, template. You can paste it in your clinic. Also pay, paste how to link yours. You can paste it in your clinic. I hope that is the correct link now. So that everybody will be able to recognize recognize it. So you can paste it to your clinic and you can see those ventricular tachycardia which need to be treated very urgently. Okay. So you should never um, wait. So we now have this. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Wide QRS and a very, very fast, fast reading. This person could be talking to you. Typically, their pulse will not be able to be felt. This is a precursor. You can see we wrote life threatening. It needs to be shocked. Life threatening, shock, life threatening. So the QRS is wide. QRS from here to here is, is more definitely, it's always a one big one box. Most. Five small boxes. Correct. So from here to here, we can see that QRS. That is a wide QRS, and the rate is fast. So we are looking at a ventricular tachycardia. You must notice when we do do um, ACLS, we will now show you more about what to do in that situation. But for now, go on our YouTube page, search for cardio care, and you see how we thought how you can do it here in Nigeria, how you can do it with your patients in Nigeria. So um, I think we will continue with the other one. All right, so that is uh, right and left bundle brand block. So I will show you um, an ECG now, which I expect you should be able to read. John, sorry for the breaking transmission. Um, so where were we now? The, the M and the Yes, the so we're showing you this one now. In this, in this place, we said QRS is prolonged, it's up to five. five boxes in v1 we can like see it like an m and in v6 it looks like a big v or a big w so m w m r w maru so this is a right, right bundle branch, branch block. block just like we had um, had said earlier So, right bundle branch block. So, if you look at this one now, you can see how it is in V1 and in V6. And then we come here, we come here and we are seeing exactly that. So, I hope that is really clear. We've just shown you how to uh, identify a bundle branch block. And if it is a left bundle branch block, essentially it's just the opposite. Yes. This thing you are seeing in V1, you will see it in V6. This thing you are seeing in V6 will be in V1. So, that's essentially. Um, what it is so um let's go back to our sheet you all have this sheet already with you 
the way to go about it is as soon as you finish this uh, lecture now, now get ECG. take ECGs, take that shit and use it to this. Is. So now let's look, we we'll now look at the segments. SC. The most important segment we want to learn is ST segment. Anybody comes with ulcer, do ECG. Adults, anybody diabetic comes with chest pain, chest discomfort, do ECG. Pneumonia, anybody not breathing well, do ECG. Please don't sit down and assume it's pneumonia. Don't say it's ulcer. Don't say it's body pain. Don't say it's malaria for, for crying out loud. Please do an ECG. You could be saving somebody's life. And look at these ST segments. If the ST segment is elevated like this. So how do we say whether this ST segment is elevated or not? So let's look at it together. We look at what we call the isoelectric line that Dr. Alecon showed us earlier. So we see this line here. You can see my, my, my red line. That is the line. And we can see that this line is where the arrow is, is above that red line. So let me use another color uh, black for emphasis. Let's look at another one again. We can see the line. Can we see that line? And we can see that this ST segment is far above principalities and powers. Yes. <laughs> far above, seated far above in heavenly places. Again, you can see it in V2. You can see the line again. And then you can see so that ST segment far above. Again, you can see in V3 here, here. So sometimes, unfortunately, somebody has been treated for ulcer, 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 and we see this one. Patients die from this thing. Heart attack is deadly. Okay? And you can see in two, this one now, we can see it again. Now, the trick about this is don't use only one bit to say it, and don't use only one uh, lead. So that is why we talk about these contiguous leads. You must sit in at least two contiguous leads. That's what we have, we have shown you on this our slide. You must sit in at least two contiguous leads. We have written the lateral leads, septal leads, anterior leads, inferior leads. So in this one on the right, this is two, this is three, this is AVF. So that is an inferior myocardial infarction. And this one is V1, V2, V3, and even V4. So that is anteroceptal myocardial infarction. Very, very important. Dr. So Lekha, anything you want to add again? If you are not sure about what you are seeing, refer. Yes, refer. Refer. It, it, you, somebody could die. Please. And another thing, what ECG may not show you this thing. Correct. So somebody with chest pain, your first ECG is looking number. Don't say, oh, that is the end. Please, after three to four hours, do another ECG. ECG. All right, great. So we, we are coming down. Now we come to the enlargement. We come to enlargement. And on the enlargement, we just simply, I should be bothered about enlargement. Maybe you should just talk about atria and do okay, so things. Uh, so for atria, we just look if the P wave in lead two is very tall, more than two so and a half yeah. small boxes, boxes. We say the right atrium is enlarged. And if it is very wide, more than three small boxes, we say the left atrium is enlarged. Period. Not very small. more than that. Not more than that. Okay. So very important for you to um, to know. Now, sometimes people have problems with their coronary arteries. They could be having what we call an end semi. They may not have this, they may ST. have chest pain, but they may not have this, exactly, they may not have this ST going up. But what instead they may have is ST going down. You can see AVL. Can we all see AVL in this, our image? And you have this screen sheet there with you. We can see AVL here. This is AVL. And we can see in this case, the ST segment is depressed. So it is actually below uh, yes, the electric line. So that is one thing. The other thing to look at is what we call Q waves and T wave inversion. And we can see in this case, we can see Q waves. A Q wave is the first negative deflection. If there is a small notch here, then it's no longer a Q wave, it's an, it's an S wave. Yes. So if, if, but there will be no negative deflection and it comes down here, that is a Q wave. Now, 
we say it is abnormal if it is more than one quarter of the R wave, number one, no, or if it's more than one small square, or it is wider than one small square. So this is a P wave. Then we can see that there is T wave inversion, meaning the T wave is facing down. Just like we say for P wave. Anytime you see all of these things, we think, it, if you are in the setting of chest pain, we thinking that there could be myocardial ischemia, infarction, or ischemia. And you, and you can watch our previous uh, uh, webinar, on, webinar chest on chest pain and myocardial infarction. So with this, we've come to the end of ECGs. So I will just go through a few things again. Number one, check the redeem. And how do you do that? Uh, so number one, check the identity calibration. Make sure you are getting the, make right. Sure you are getting the right ECG. Seek a second opinion. Even amongst us, we ask ourselves, we ask other people, what do they think? So your your opinion may not be all in all. Then go to the reading. Look at the reading. Are all the RR intervals equal? Is the P wave upright? All those things we talked about. And then know some specific readings. Okay. Now we now came down to the rates. And we say simply divide the RR interval and say 300 divided by this RR interval. Period. And we get that. Then we came down and we said, look at the intervals. And we said, if the PR interval is long, it's the first degree AV block. Now we said also, sorry in this place, we said also that sometimes after a P wave, there may be no QRS. And sometimes the husband and wife will divorce and both the P wave and QRS will not be in sync. That is a complete heart block. And I'm just summarizing what we have said so far. Then we came to the uh, intervals. And we say when the QRS is wide, is a cause for concern. It could be a bone branch block. Now, if it is wide and it has this M pattern in V1 and V pattern in V6, we call that a right bone branch block. And if it's reverse, a left bone branch block. However, if we have a wide QRS and the heart rate is very fast, what you are looking at is a ventricular tachycardia, and that can lead to death. It needs intervention immediately. You need to shock, and if you don't know how to shock, then you need to be referring that patient and moving around with that patient. That patient will die in front of you. Now we set the segments. And we thought that the main segment we're looking at is the ST segment. And we said once the ST segment is above the other line, and you can see it in two or more leads, then you are likely to have a carrier infarction, especially if the patient has ongoing chest pain. Urgent intervention is needed. And we typically do that in cardio care. We take them straight to the cat lab and we open up the blood vessels that may be blocked. Then we talk about the chambers that could be enlarged. And then we talk about the Q wave and the T wave inversion. If you see all of these things, you should be able to um, use it for your everyday life. Now I will just end with the final one, which you already have. If you look at this, these are some basic ECG patterns. The first one, the, let me start from down. Let me start from now. Um, so normal ECG, like right, regular, the pulse is palpable, it is rated between 60 to 100, P wave before every QRS, narrow QRS. Every nurse, every doctor should be able to recognize this on a, on a patient monitor and know what to do. The next one is the pulse is now very slow. You are getting 30, you are getting 40. You do the ECG, and you can see the P wave, they are dancing at anyhow, QRS are coming, it is not long, it is not short, QRS and P will have no oh, interaction. Yes. Correct, complete heart block. Typically a pacemaker is needed. Most is irregular, P wave and QRS have no relationship, normal or wide QRS and a pacemaker is needed. Then we said pulse could be regular, irregular. And we could have this multiple P wave mm -hmm. before a QRS, like a Mobit 2, uh, two one or maybe Mobit type 2. I will say that could be a flutter. Okay, I will give examples there, you should recognize this. Now, you could have an irregular pulse. And when you look at the ECG, the you RR, P wave. you can see a P wave. A diagonal intervals are irregular. Correct. That's atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation. Atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter and complete heart block are urgent. They may or may not be emergent, depending on the clinical condition, but they are urgent. You need to get input to prevent stroke. To prevent a lot of things. What we typically do for atrial fibrillation is we try and convert the rhythm by giving them a shock or some drugs. Or if we cannot convert the rhythm at all, we slow it down and we give certain drugs to prevent stroke. 
Now we now come to these ones that are critical emergencies. Yeah. Critical emergencies. And the first one we said is this ST elevation MI. The ST is elevated like we showed in the uh, in the previous one. We can see the isoelectric line there, and the ST is elevated. Let me clear. So you can see the isoelectric line and the ST in relation to it is elevated. You can see the isoelectric line and it's elevated. This one must not be missed by anybody that attended this webinar. You can see this one that looks like a tombstone and it's all the way up. These kind of patients are. So anybody, they will have chest pain or they will have ulcer. And um, you have this ST elevation, it is an emergency. Now we have another one. It's very fast. 150 to 250, you may or may not have a pulse, but the QRS, QRS is narrow. Correct. What do we say narrow QRS is? Can anybody tell us in the chat box what we say the narrow QRS is? How many boxes? How many boxes is the narrow QRS? How many boxes is the narrow QRS? We say the wide QRS is what? So good. Benny, if I hear, thank you. Less than three small boxes. So in this case, we can see it starts. Here it ends here. Very small, less than three small boxes. So when it's fast, we call this a supraventricular. It is a critical emergency. If you don't do something, you will have death, but it's not as life-threatening immediately like the other one. So typically we have to shock, we have to give adenosine. Some people have to can have time enough to be transferred. Now uh, the ones that are life-threatening and every person that calls himself a health worker should go to. Typically, yeah. wide, complex, fast, no pulse. This patient could have lost consciousness. The patient will be unrecordable, and you are seeing this. What you need to do is to shock that patient. You need to get a defibrillator and shock. And then the main one, by this time, the patient will, have been, patient will be in cardiac arrest. The QRS is wide, but it's irregular. It is looking like jaga jaga. Okay? V-fib, this is what they will say in uh, Grey's Anatomy. V-fib, V-fib. Uh, color code and all of that. Here we shout, help, help, help. Help, <laughs> 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 Then you bring something that you shock. But if you don't do anything, this patient is, is going to die and uh, see their maker very soon. So those are the things. So you should must understand and have this one. The only way to know it is to keep on looking at it and looking at it and looking at it. We have given you two free basic, um, two free materials, these basic ECG patterns, and we have given you also the ECG sheet, cheat sheet that you can use. After this, find 10, 20 ECGs and try and report them. If you are not able to report them, and Pamela, are you ready? If you are not able to report them, and put them, put the group ECG on the WhatsApp group and we'll assist, but you can attempt. Then we'll assist to report your ECG for you, if only you have made an attempt. If there are too many from the same person who we'll suspect you are doing business, <laughs> and you should give us our cuts. <laughs> so um, you can go back on our YouTube channel and you can re-watch this video and many other videos, some of which are more in-depth, some are less in-depth, and then uh, you can uh, use that. So you have this sheet for you. Um, this uh, webinar is coming from Cardio Care, and uh, what besides uh, this we also do numerous research cardiology consultations, consultations in internal medicine, endocrinology, stroke, uh, epilepsy, neurology, astro, diabetes. We also offer advanced cardiovascular interventions so that people don't have to travel abroad. If you scan the QR code, you can refer to us. And we do coronary angios and interventions, cardiac devices. This week, we must have put in at least 12 or 20, 15 cardiac devices for different patients with heart failure, with complete heart block. And now you can, you can recognize complete heart block, including IVC filters. Then we do, this is a patient that I managed. You can see the leg was almost black before, and after a while, it came back to looking good uh, to prevent uh, gangrene and loss, okay? And then, you, we also do cardiac surgeries and structural interventions for pediatrics. So for structural interventions in pediatrics, we are just starting that. We are bringing our teams from, from the UK. They come in and do the cases for the children and go back. So the children can go home almost the, ne the next day for their hole in the heart. And they don't have to have open heart surgery per se. And they are good to go for certain types. Other ones still need open heart surgery. So this is uh, this. Pamela, over to you. 
while I will just look through the questions. If there are any body questions, put them in the chat box as we round up. And um, Pamela, over to you. While looking at questions in the chat box, um, do you assess false? Are you ready? Start sharing now so that we know you're ready. So I'll answer the questions after uh, ah, Dr. Georgia and Agilo. How are you doing? Long time. Great. Pamela is going to share the link to join. Pamela is going to share the link to join. The WhatsApp group. Pamela is going to share the link to join the WhatsApp group. Uh, Pamela, go ahead with the presentation. All right, so I'm sharing the link again, and we'll answer questions. Um, I will answer questions. Let me see if I can share the link again for people that did not download. I think this is one link. Uh, then we'll try and find family. I love people are adding their phone number so they can add, the, add them to work to the WhatsApp group since we cannot do it. All right, so let me ask, answer some questions. Put off your mic, please. Let's answer some questions. All right. Um, let's answer some questions. Do you assess pulse or rhythm in any particular lead? The main lead we typically use is uh, two, lead two. Typically lead two we use to assess the rhythm. So you see all the issues we shared was lead two. Um, what's the maximum duration of duration in RR interval for the rhythm to be regular? Sometimes the RR are not exactly the same. Okay, so um, sometimes we have what we call sinus arrhythmia. So when a patient is taking a deep breath, they have something different. When the patient is taking a breathing out, breathing out is also different. Okay, so uh, that could be little, but it's just very small. The difference should not be one than two small, two small squares like that. So when the patient is breathing in, the artery is faster. When the patient, patient, uh, the person breathes out, the artery is, is slower. Okay, so let's see if there are other questions. Um, you say the P wave is absent in atrial fibrillation. I thought it's the other way around, exactly. The P wave is absent, absent in atrial fibrillation. fibrillation. So whether you see atrial fibrillation, what's the difference atrial fibrillation will address that atrial fibrillation? Okay. Uh, is there a way to assess the recording? Yes. Recordings are, will be available on our YouTube channel. So go to YouTube, um, type uh, cardio care, Pamela, can you add the link for YouTube and add the link for joining? Add the links. We we'll add the links to join the WhatsApp group and the link for our YouTube channel, so you can see that there are other things we have discussed today. Um, making that most of right and left ventricular hypertrophy, we, we we skipped that just for time and for ease. Okay, we say this is for everyday practice. So let me just say for RVH, right ventricular hypertrophy, V1 is positive. So if your V1 is facing upright, you are dealing with right, right ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, for LVH, if you if you have there are many criteria. There are many criteria so for you just want to make it easy for you, us. Use the um you can use your S wave in 